Hello, I'm Greg Redke of Redke Mods, and welcome to episode 6 of season 3 of my Power PC series. Today's episode, I'll be showing you my newest acquisition, Mac number 50 that works. Um, well, that works is kind of a um, Mac number 50 that I claim. Let's go that way because uh, I do now have a few dead Quicksilvers on my hands. Um, yeah. Uh, but number 50 that I claim, Mac number 50, it's a very special Mac. Uh, and if you count uh, the extra stuff I bought with it, it's the most expensive Mac I've ever bought. New or old, Intel or PowerPC. Yeah, it is. And it's just a base model 800 megahertz from the early 2002 series. You ask why I spent that kind of money on a base model 2002. That's because this Quicksilver right here is not just a base model 2002 anymore. And it came with some really nice goodies. Um, I bought this system off of Harun Abdullah, who um, is a guy off of uh, Loin Mac. Very nice guy. I've talked to him many times in the past. And um, this was his old personal system. He bought new. And uh, Har Haran um, was, um, has been out in the country for eight years now. He uh, bought this with, uh, he said, like some student loan money. Um, and um, he was, uh, he ended up becoming a DJ and a bunch of other things for a while as he was going through college and stuff. And then, um, you know, he, he left the country in 2008. His parents still live here. And uh, his mother wanted his Max out of the house. So I volunteered to buy this system. Now, first off, he wanted to sell this about a year ago. Uh, I mean, a month ago. And that would have been a longer time there. About a month ago, he had it all arranged to be sold, but the sale fell through. And a few days ago, he uh, just put a comment back on the post. See, originally, I wanted just what was uh, two things that were in the system. I have not unveiled why it costs so much yet. Um, I just wanted two things out of it, but he didn't want to part it out, which I understood because it was his old personal system. And um, plus, that isn't really saving room. Um, but the sale fell through, and he needed to sell it. So, the second I saw the post that the sale had fell through, um, it was a few days after my uh, semi fully functional Quicksilver had blown up. <laughs> um, yeah. Backstory, really quick. Um, you know, my Quicksilver from episode. I can't remember what episode it was. Episode 7 of Season 1 and uh, a few episodes in um, when I was doing the uh, TI-4600 test that has the dead L3 cache. Um, the motherboard blew up in it, the logic board. Uh, and a lot of people wish I'd filmed that. Um, you would have been crying if you watched that. But uh, that system, the logic board blew up in it. Um, the system that Mike Stanhope gave me, um, the CPU must have had something wrong with it. I can't figure out what was wrong with it. I'm not blaming Mike because you can't tell there was anything wrong with it. And when I plugged it into the system, it caused the power supply to blow up, uh, partially. I, I smelled something, but I wasn't really sure. And then I decided um, I'll put my old CPU back in it. It blew up the old CPU, and then um, I saw a nice sparkly fireworks on the uh, logic board. So I was thinking, great, uh, I might have two dead CPUs. I probably have a dead logic board. I'll try the other logic board from the system he gave me, and I saw a lightning bolt shoot out the side of the board. So I've got two dead logic boards and two dead dual 1 gigahertz. So, when he posted this, I'm thinking, I really want another Quicksilver. And the more I looked at it, the more I realized this is my dream Quicksilver. This is the dream Mac I've always wanted. And yes, I do have a few dream Macs. Um, you know, the world's quickest, uh, world's fastest iMac G4. That's one of them. 
um, a 5 comma 1 Mac Pro which I'm in the process of building right now um, and this system right here this system isn't a base model 800 anymore and this is where we're getting into why it costs so much and it was still worth it because I still saved a lot of money I'll tell you exactly how much this thing's probably worth at least six hundred dollars with all the parts that are in it or what came with it anyway and I didn't spend anywhere near that I'm not that stupid <laughs> but um, I did save a lot of money and sorry if the video is starting to get shaky my arms falling asleep I did save a lot of money and um, let's tell you what's in the system before we show you Da, 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 da. a dual 1.8 G4 a sonnet but that's not the only thing it came with it came with a sweet multi port which is a uh, port extension on the front of uh, the system extremely rare a billion times rarer than any sonnet CPU out there I'd never seen one personally this system was an upgrade system from the time period so it's never getting torn down this is an error correct upgrade system which we'll show you um, it also came with another bonus and that would be da, 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 a single 1.4 which was the first upgrade CPU he put in it and this will actually be going into the sawtooth I got off of Michael Stanhope to upgrade it even more from the 1 gigahertz to a 1.4 I'm really excited to do that. I'll be doing a video on that soon, and then we'll be doing a video on switching that over to the blue and white case. But anyway, getting back to the point, this system right here has the Sweet Multi port, the Dual Sonnet 1.8, and a FirmTech SATA card in it. Factory FirmTech SATA card. And um, it also came with his old pro keyboard and a studio display and it also came with this aluminum keyboard that he probably got um, shortly before he left uh, the US but yeah so we're going to show you the system because it's not factory and it's it's definitely worth why I paid for it um, it was it was pricey, but it was worth it. So let's get going. It's alive! Okay, so we'll start off with the dusty old Sonnet 1.4. Um, I guess he took it out of the system and just swapped in the new one. Um, yeah, so it needs cleaned, but I'm sure it works fine. Really neat chip there. Uh, I always love the orange um, capacitors that are on these things. They're some really neat looking. But that is the Sonnet 1.4. Um, put this all away real quick here. Uh, I'll be right back. Okay, so what's in this box? Well, um, it's not the original CPU. I did not buy that from him. Um, since this system's never being downgraded anyway. Um, this is actually the accessories. We have the original install discs here that we have the Apple hardware test and uh, the applications and all the OS install discs. This system originally came with a CDRW in it, so all of these are on CD. Um, but now it's got DVD RW in it. Uh, I don't know what kind. I haven't looked at that yet. He says I think it was a Pioneer. So it's probably like a Super Drive. It came with two Quicksilver fans. Um, I don't know where they came from. But um, <laughs> here's two Quicksilver fans. And it came with the original power cable here. Pretty cool. Then, of course, it came with the original uh, paperwork and um, upgrade CDs for the um, CPU. So we'll set all this back in, and then we'll get into the system. 
And here's the system. It's kind of dirty. It's been sitting for eight years. Um, and um, it was heavily used. And I don't think it was ever really fully cleaned out before. Uh, it is kind of dusty inside. I, I have looked on the inside, but I haven't really looked closely at anything. So I haven't paid attention to a whole lot inside yet. But I have opened it up to verify everything was in it. Um, but here's the system. Now, um, from the side, of course, it's very unassuming. Tell you it comes with an aftermarket speaker cover, a bunch of stickers, which I uh, debated on a lot and decided finally that I am going to be peeling them off. Um, I want this to go back to kind of a, a stock look to it. Um, but, you know, then again, it also is era modded. So, um, yeah, I'm going to probably peel them off. Uh, this is probably from his old Quadra uh, he was telling me about. That probably came with the system. I have no clue what that is. <laughs> and then a DJ Shadow sticker, who I had to look up. Um, but, yeah. So anyway, if we, uh, I, I don't know if I can get enough to get the CD open here. Here's the Pioneer Drive, and then here's the Sweet Multi Port. Now it's got covers on it, so we'll pull them out. He said this thing sucked in a lot of dust. And you can tell. But this is what a Sweet Multi Port looks like. USB, CF. Um, this actually might be a multi-reader. No, I think it's just CF. It's full of dust, too. It's pretty nasty inside. And two firewire. These things are extremely rare, extre extremely hard to find. I'll uh, be cleaning that up. So we'll just stick the covers back in for now. Um, and we'll uh, spin it around to the back. And here is the back. And of course we have all the default ports. The original specs of the systems right here. And then here's where we get into the fun part again. Now this right now he said has a Radeon 9000 in it. It originally had a, a TI-4600 in it but that broke. Which um, sucks because I would have loved to have that. But uh, he, he trashed it. You know. Oh well. Then here's the sweet multi port card, and I'm not really sure if these are uh, USB 2. These might be one. I, there's not a whole lot about these online. We're going to have to test the speeds on them. But it's got USB B. I don't know why. I don't know what that's for. And then two USB A's. Then three FireWires. Then underneath it looks like it has a. Uh, I figure a USB 2 card in it. But here's where the fun stuff happens. Let's open it up. And here is everything. We've got 1.5 gigs of RAM, so that's maxed out. This does appear to actually not be a 9000. This is probably the original graphics card which it says a RV200 on the back of it so this is like a, a Radeon 7500 or something like that. So yeah there's that's that card. Here's the sweet multi port here and uh, it uses this ribbon cable to go up into here and then feed out to the front. Um, classy black and brown cable. It's a little funky looking and it's also starting to peel apart which I'll have to fix that before it gets damaged. Um, I don't know how. I'll probably put some packing tape or something on it. It's already not super great looking but um, you know you get what you get. So you got that and then we've also got the Fermitech, uh, the Firmtech um, SATA card here. 
uh, with one SATA cable. This originally had two hard drives in it. He had his dad remove that, I understand, security, personal files, all that stuff. Uh, I wish he hadn't told me what one of them was though. One of them was a, a 10,000 RPM Raptor. Um, that would have been nice to have. Oh well. But uh, I, because of knowing he took that out, I've already set up a drive for it, which I made with my G5. It's just a clone of my G5's drive, so we can test it. And then the last card, I don't know, it says Adaptech. Uh, it might be USB 2.0. Um, I can't really see it very well. Um, but yeah, so you got that, and then the uh, probably most expensive part on the whole system is the Sonnet 1.8 here, which is quite dusty. It got some good use out of it, you can tell. But it's got the uh, it's got a custom fan in it, which um, he hand wired himself. I understand. I can tell. Uh, <laughs> uh, I'll probably be redoing that if I leave this fan in here. Um, this one probably pulls more um, heat out. So that was a good thing that he did, but wow. <laughs> but yeah, so it's got everything down to, uh, it looks like the original um, pram battery in it. I have to replace that too. But yeah, here's the inside of the system. It looks really good. And um, it does look like an official super drive too. So that's cool. So yeah. Um, this system, I don't know if it... The uh, case fan looks like it's been upgraded too. It's also a good thing. Um, but this system, I don't know if it actually works. Because I don't know if it was ever actually tested in the last eight years. So we may be doing the first turn on since uh, he, you know, left. Uh, but before I hook it up, I am going to take the hard drive over here and put it in here and hook it up so we have something to boot off of. So I'll be right back. Okay, so after realizing I have no screws whatsoever for some reason to um, screw the hard drive in with, <laughs> uh, it's zip tied in, but it's it's in there, so yeah, well, we're not moving the system a whole lot, so it should be fine. <laughs> I'll have to find some screws. But anyway, it's all hooked up, and we are ready to close the case, and uh, pray it still works. So, yeah, let's uh, get that out of the way first. Let's uh, hope. Okay, so everything that needs to be hooked up is hooked up except for the power, which we will plug in now and pray we don't hear anything other than a good power supply and this cable's too short. Yeah. All right, we'll slide this back some. And here we go. I don't smell anything. But it didn't really make a power supply noise. So let's see what happens. Um, we'll turn this off and hit the power button. That's a good sign. Hold in the option key. And here's my hard drive. Awesome. This is a very dim studio display and it's got a funny refresh rate on it. It's probably because it's been off for a long time. It might just need to warm up. Let's see here. What should I boot it off of? Yeah, let's boot it off a of Leopard. Here we go. I can definitely tell that fan he replaced must move a lot more air. It does sound more powerful.
here we go we are booted up into my G5's uh, spared backup here um, we don't have any Wi-Fi currently we don't have a time to set on it right now um, so we can't connect it to the internet yet but let's see what's in it first off let's see what the display settings are so we'll hit the button okay the button doesn't work let's see what we have here brightness is down turn that off it helps some uh, options disable power button and that would explain why the button didn't work now let's see if the button works there we go okay good I must have had that set on my G5 for my other uh, studio display okay so right now it is maxed out um, CPU wise <laughs> um, it is indexing that would explain it um, so yeah it probably won't do that when it's finished indexing uh, let's see what we have here about this Mac dual 1.8 gigahertz power PC G4 1.5 gigs of RAM sorry it's a little blurry there we go okay more info we can see all the specs Quicksilver model number um, it properly identifies it as a G4 that's cool uh, it's got to be the custom flash on it um, yeah everything there looks correct let's look down at the ATA okay we've got a Pioneer DVD RW burning burning it supports just it's just um, um, an era correct uh, super drive so it doesn't support dual layer I'll probably be replacing that with uh, one of those G5 ones I'll always use um, let's see here it's not showing the serial ATA because it should actually be showing up in here since a firm tech usually does that so we can't actually see the hard drive info in here but we can go to PC cards here we go Siri tech that is the card it says ATA it is plugged in of course because it booted off this drive go figure we've got it is a 9000 Pro um, it's a very strange looking 9000 Pro um, my other 9000s don't quite look like that I don't think but um, I might just be mistaken I might be thinking of another card um, let's look in the USB we do have a high-speed bus and then we have other buses um, I don't know let's let's test this sweet multi port out um, pull this cover off let's plug a keyboard into it it will at least tell us if it's plugged into the bus I think so uh, like that then we need to refresh the thing it's command R I think Command R, Command R. He is not showing the keyboard. Is it working? We can see. Hit the eject button. It does nothing. Hmm. That could be a problem. Um. I'll be right back. I'm going to try to find a flash drive. All right, let's try this again. I got a flash drive from high school, so this is like probably getting towards 10 years old. Plug it in, and no activity light. Well, that's not good. 
<laughs> um, it's not showing anything. It didn't tell me I didn't safely eject. Um, so yeah, the sweet multi port looks like it needs some work done to it. Uh, let me think of a firewire device I might have to plug into here. I'll be right back. So if you're noticing this blinking, by the way, it's not blinking. That's the LED refresh rate. My MDD does the same thing. Anyway, we're going to be plugging in this EyeSight and seeing if it works. So we'll open it and plug it in. Okay, so it didn't open up iChat. Firewire is not seeing anything. So yeah, the sweet multi port is dead currently. Um, it might be a, as easy as a loose cable, which I'm hoping and praying it is. It's still neat to have, but if it doesn't work, um, it's kind of pointless to have it. <laughs> but I'll, I'll work on that. So yeah, so I'll pull up, put his port cover back in there, and um, we'll wrap up the video. So yeah, the system has been uh, has been treated nicely, but also ridden hard a lot of its life, from what you can tell. Um, but I'm really happy. This is a very, very, very good deal, um, and. I can't really complain about a few little things that I'm pretty sure I can fix. Um, it's <laughs> it's a tool 1.8, which is just incredible. I never thought I'd actually own one, and I couldn't pass up the opportunity. Um, I've been wanting a dual 1.8 Quicksilver since basically day one of owning my first Quicksilver. Um, of course, these don't have L3 cache, but the speed and power of the um, you know car the uh, CPUs themselves it makes up for it, and um, you know it, it's you don't really need the L3 when you have this kind of power and punch. Um, who knows? It might still get a uh, an upgrade one day. Uh, it might be overclocked one day. Uh, it's probably got 7447s on it. Uh, we could put some 7448s on it, and Colin could probably get it past 2 gigahertz. I could probably get this up to 2 gigahertz, but um, we're going to save that for a long time from now because I don't want to kill it right now. <laughs> I don't want to kill it, period, really. Um, because that wouldn't be good. But I, I'm really happy. Thank you, uh, Hiron, for um, um, selling me this system here, man. It's 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 really cool, and I can't wait to build it up, play around with it. So yeah. Uh, anyway, guys, um, don't forget I do have a Patreon account now. If you'd like to help support me, I'll have a link at the end of the video, and also in the description below. Um, also, I am now sponsored by SellYourMac.com, so if you have an Apple device you'd like to sell, SellYourMac.com slash RedKMods. Anyway, so that is the end of today's video, and thank you guys for watching. This has been a RedKMods video. Okay, so bonus material time, guys. Um, I got the uh, sweet multi port to work uh, and cleaned it. That's what uh, a sweet multi port looks like, and it's all hooked up there. The reason why this was not working was because you know how I said that it was really strange it had a USB B on the back of it? That's because this is literally a glorified hub. So you've got to plug the firewire into a firewire port and you've got to plug the USB into a USB port and then it will work and um, here's some proof first off there is the flash drive if I unplug it it will uh, not go away because this hasn't refreshed let me refresh that it's gone okay but if I plug it in uh, like that
that, it will start working. It will start working. Why is it not working? Well, it showed back up there. Um, for some reason, the system's not reading this drive. I think it's the flat, the way it's formatted. But it sees it, so that's good. And then I've got the uh, eyesight plugged in here. If we twist the uh, lens cover, eye chat should pop up. There we go. So yeah, FireWire and USB works in the multi-port. Um, the CF card reader, let's close this out. Let's close this out. Thank you. Uh, the CF card reader works if we go over here. There we go. Okay, so that's cool. Everything seems to be working fine. And the last thing is I wasn't going to include this in the video. That's why this is bonus material now. But um, I had Jay Vry complaining about not showing you what the benchmark results were for this. It's almost a 1400. Um, and it's really impressive at the uh, power this thing has got. Let's uh, zoom in here. There you go. And uh, this thing runs really cool, even with the case open, and that is because he put the fan in backwards. That would explain why this thing was so dusty. Um, all the fans, it's, honestly when the case is closed though, it should suck up and go back through that fan. Um, but it's pretty darn dusty, so. I'll, I'll be cleaning this more. Um, I showed you a picture earlier of what it looks like now. We might as well show you again. It's what it looks like now. Looks really nice. So anyway, that's the end of uh, the bonus material. And uh, here come the Patreon people. Mm -hmm.